In order to understand the dark forest hypothesis, it is essential to examine the most fundamental version of an unstoppable, planet-destroying weapon known as the relativistic missile. Contrary to traditional missiles that travel at conventional speeds, relativistic missiles travel through space at nearly the speed of light. The relativistic effects induced by the velocity of relativistic projectiles pose immense challenges to their interception, yet the most distressing characteristic of these weapons originates from their movement at almost the same speed as the signals they generate and reflect. The detection of these weapons consequently becomes impractical because by the time the signal is detected, it is already too late to implement any countermeasures. To illustrate this point, let us examine the detection process for a conventional missile. The signal emitted by a conventional missile is observed well in advance of its arrival at the target. This allows for a substantial amount of time to react accordingly. On the other hand, for an external observer, a relativistic missile and its signal travel at nearly identical velocities. As a result, when the signal arrives at the target, the relativistic missile is only nanoseconds behind. Interestingly, due to wavefront compression, the missile would appear to be moving faster than the speed of light from the perspective of the targeted observer, potentially reaching millions of times the speed of light. This doesn't imply the missile physically travelled such vast distances so quickly. Rather, as the missile's light waves reach us in compressed intervals, we would perceive it as moving faster than light, a phenomenon known as apparent superluminal motion. These traits make relativistic weapons practically invulnerable to interception. The negligible time between detection and impact leaves no chance for defensive measures. Can objects with mass travel faster than light? And if not, why do some objects appear to exhibit superluminal motion when observed from Earth? The effect responsible for this apparent faster-than-light motion is known as the projection effect. To understand it in the context of light, we will first demonstrate a similar phenomenon using sound. Imagine a sphere playing a one-minute song. The first note of the song is represented by a blue wave and the last note by a red wave, with the two waves collectively marking the duration of the song. The sphere is positioned 20 kilometers away, the distance sound travels in one minute. So when the sphere begins to play the song, it takes one minute for the sound to reach us. As a result, we perceive the song to start one minute after it actually did. If the sphere is stationary, the song will end exactly one minute after we start hearing it, with no alteration in the song's playback duration. For both the sphere and us, the song's duration remains the same. Now consider what happens if the sphere moves toward us at half the speed of sound. In this scenario, besides the frequency increase due to the Doppler effect, something remarkable occurs. While the first note of the song remains unaffected, the last note reaches us in half the expected time. From our perspective, the song plays twice as fast. While the sphere emits the song over one minute, we perceive its entirety compressed into 30 seconds due to the sphere's motion relative to us. This phenomenon is a result of the delay in information we receive, specifically the sound waves traveling at 343 meters per second. When the object emitting these waves moves toward us, the distance of each successive sound wave decreases, causing each subsequent note of the song to reach us sooner. And that's what we call the projection effect. If the sphere's velocity is increased to 80% of the speed of sound, the first sound wave will still reach us at the usual time. However, the final wave will arrive only 12 seconds later, as it was emitted much closer to the observer. From our perspective, this results in the entire song being compressed into a duration of just 12 seconds. But what happens if the sphere travels toward us at twice the speed of sound? Assuming it is technologically advanced enough to do so without generating a sonic boom, and there's nothing but air around us, a counterintuitive phenomenon arises. The final sound wave, corresponding to the end of the song, reaches us before the initial wave. 
Consequently, from our perspective, the song plays in reverse. Since light waves also propagate at a finite speed, there is an inherent delay in the transmission of information. As you may know, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. So how can relativistic objects exhibit superluminal motion under certain conditions? Let us now scale this concept to cosmic scales and change the seconds on the clock into minutes. Suppose a sphere is located near Saturn with Jupiter at half the distance. Now consider an advanced telescope on Earth capable of observing this object with perfect clarity all the time, even if its emitted light transitions into the gamma spectrum. The sphere emits light for a precise duration of 60 minutes. The first emitted light is represented by a blue wave, while the final emitted light is represented by a red wave, together visualising the total duration of the emission. It's important to note that at this distance, light takes 60 minutes to reach us. Consequently, when the first light reaches our telescope, it represents the sphere as it was 60 minutes earlier. If the sphere remains stationary relative to us, the final visible light will reach our telescope 60 minutes after the first, as expected. If the sphere moves toward us at a velocity of 1,000 kilometers per second, our initial observation will place it at a distance of 1 billion 80 million kilometers, and 60 minutes later, we will observe it at a distance of approximately 1 billion 76 million kilometers, for both the observer and the sphere, the sphere has travelled a total of 3,600,000 kilometres in 60 minutes, which is consistent with its velocity and does not present any unusual behaviour. But what happens if the sphere is moving towards us at relativistic speed? If the sphere moves toward us at half the speed of light, information delay again comes into play. While this velocity is insufficient to produce apparent superluminal motion, the sphere will appear to approach us at a speed far greater than its relative velocity. In this scenario, the sphere will reach the vicinity of Jupiter after 60 minutes, coinciding with the emission of the final light wave, represented here as a red wave. Consequently, this final light wave will reach us in half the time, as it is emitted from a point halfway closer to us compared to the initial light wave. As a result, from our perspective, the sphere will appear to have travelled from Saturn to Jupiter in just 30 minutes, even though 60 minutes have passed for the sphere. Effectively, from our perspective, the sphere traversed this distance twice as fast. Now, if the sphere is travelling at 90% of the speed of light, the initial light wave emitted from Saturn will reach us at the usual time. However, the light wave emitted from Jupiter 33.3 minutes later will arrive just 3.3 minutes after the first wave. As a result, from our perspective, the sphere has covered a distance of 540 million kilometers in only 3.3 minutes, far exceeding the speed of light. This highlights the difference between relative speed and apparent speed as perceived by an observer. The relationship arises in scenarios where the delay in light travel affects how motion is observed. Any object with a trajectory that's collinear or almost collinear with the line of sight of the observer will always appear to move faster than it actually does. Even when it comes to non-relativistic velocities, the difference in apparent velocity and relative speed is still present, however, it's incredibly small. For example, a car moving towards an observer at a relative velocity of 70 km per hour would have an apparent speed of approximately 70.000004 km per hour, a discrepancy of just 4 mm per hour which is imperceptible to the human eye. On the other hand, as the object's velocity approaches the speed of light, this difference increases exponentially. The equation for apparent speed is quite simple. For high values of the relative velocity, the apparent velocity can become much larger than the speed of light. However, this is only how motion is perceived by an observer and thus does not violate the principles of relativity. No information or object is actually travelling faster than the speed of light. It's an optical phenomenon, a consequence of the delay of light we use to perceive motion.